we're back with a Worth It season six. Six new episodes. We're gonna be doing some new things, seeing some old friends, visiting some historic sites, making some new friends. And we're going to a few of our personal favorite restaurants. Yeah. We're starting off with one of our most requested foods, burritos. Mm. I'm surprised at how long <laughs> we've been doing this. Speaking of long things, the last burrito in this video Crazy. Today on Worth It, we're gonna be trying three different burritos at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. Today we're going to what is honestly one of my favorite restaurants. It's called Sonora Town. We're gonna to be chatting with Tio and Jennifer, and we're going there to try their chivichanga. If there's one place I'm gonna rave about, it's gonna be Sonora Town. They're my number one rave. I cannot imagine you at a rave. I don't want to, actually I do wanna imagine you at a rave. Do you imagine me on ecstasy? Uh, are we going there right now? Well, you're about to see me have this burrito. Tell us about Sonora Town. We're a northern Mexican style taqueria based on Tio's hometown of San Luis Rio Colorado, Mexico. Northern Mexico, it's all cooked over mesquite. The grill was really the main reason why we opened the restaurant. That's really the secret ingredient. So the outside of the tortilla has almost a perfume to it that adds as much to the flavor as what you're getting inside the tortilla. Sonoran style tortillas should be very thin, delicate, almost like a bed sheet. We get our flour from Sonora, Mexico. We've tried different ones from here. It just doesn't work out. The trip to Sonora is five hours by car, twice per month. We drive to Tio's hometown. We buy sacks of flour and we cross that as many times as we can before before it's time to come home. Wow. Yeah, and then like, we're crossing like giant sacks of like white powder. Right. They always so. have to taste it. <laughs> I noticed you also have a bean and cheese burrito on your menu. Yeah, um, we both love bean and cheese burritos. It's a great way to taste a tortilla. It's just a really simple beans, cheese, and our red salsa. My mom, she was a field worker. She would make them for herself, go to work and eat a couple of them, but then come back with a few. Me and my sisters would fight over bean and cheese burritos and they're just like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> We take it seriously. Yes. I know that we can't came here primarily for the chivichanga, but it's recommended that we try the bean and cheese burrito. How can we not? Where do I begin? Mmm. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. This tortilla is insane. Wow. It's like flaky, but not flaking. All you need in life, bean and cheese. Who's the bean, who's the cheese here? Who's the bean, who's the cheese? Yeah. One, two, three. Cheese. Bean. Yeah. And uh, I'm the bean. Adam's the tortilla. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. I'm not saving any for Adam, sorry. But, or, yeah, you can just have it. Beef chimichanga. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I had never heard of a chimichanga before Sonora Town. What is a chimichanga? What makes it a chimichanga is the filling. A burrito with a guisado inside. It's like a stewed shredded beef. Grilled tomatoes, grilled Anaheim chilies, cheeses, spices, chimichanga. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, and it's a warm. I and know. Crusty. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Is that the best thing you've ever had? Is it? It might, it might be. It's up there. It might right? be. God, that's good. Oh. Now we're gonna try it with the special salsa. Chita beans are native basically just to Sonora. Kind of citrusy, has a clean bite. Let's kick it up a notch. Oh. Oh. Sweetness in the mouth, and then a kick in the throat. That's very tasty. I don't want it to go away. What did your mom think about this? She was making these for you as a kid and now it's like you've turned into a, a really successful business in LA. She wants royalties. <laughs> <laughs> if they sold tortillas, I would straight up just buy tortillas from them. You should just buy burritos and then just unwrap them mm. and keep the tortillas. That's actually a stupid idea that I love. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, I know what we're doing next. We're gonna get some pan dulce. So to continue with our Sonora theme, we're gonna check out this bakery called Sonora Bakery. Yeah, I'm ready for some more Sonora love. Mmm. Mm. Papaya and dulce de leche. Mmm. Ready for it? Burrito fact. Burrito fact. Burritos are a regular meal for astronauts in space, since tortillas don't create crumbs in the same way the sandwich bread often does. Wow. Good enough for NASA, good enough for me. Oh, this is really soft. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. And we got a cinnamon roll for Adam. Mm. Okay, so that does it for today. Our next one is a breakfast burrito. So you 
we'll go to sleep. Everybody here, sleep. And uh... <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> what? Thank you for the instruction to sleep at night. Tomorrow morning, we're starting off with a breakfast burrito at a place called Low Key, where the owner, Matt, is showing us his cheese-crusted breakfast burrito. Did you hear those words yeah. that I just uttered? Cheese-crusted burrito. Okay. What is Low Key Burritos? So it's just a pop-up breakfast burrito. I was working at breakfast burrito joint. I kept getting in trouble for doing things like my own way. I had one kid, had a second kid on the way, and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I turned 25, and I heard there's superstition that 25 could be your best or worst year. So I'm like, screw it, let's jump off the cliff. And here it is. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty easy to do something with quality and a little bit of effort, so why not do it? Were you surprised by the popularity? I told myself when I first started, I'm gonna give this six months and it better be popular or I'm wasting my time. And I just kept saying that every day, six months from now. Eater LA came out like six months after that. Yeah. And then it got really popular. I usually start serving right at 7.15 and then I don't have any time after that. Your burrito has a cheese crust. Can you tell us about that? So my friend sells hot dogs at the farmer's market. He knew I was selling breakfast burritos on the street, so he was like, hey man, let me make you my off-menu breakfast burrito. And then he put cheese on the grill. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And he got like the big old press and he was pushing on it. I'm like, dude, this is delicious. I'm totally gonna steal that from you. And he's like, yeah, man, this is how you do it. He was into the idea of you taking that and running with it? Yeah, he said, this, this is how you do it. Easy as that. Now that I've made the cheese crust burrito, I don't really like it without cheese crust. We're in the parking lot, Matt is still over there. There's a group of men in brown overalls. That's how you know a food <laughs> vendor is good. When men in overalls are eating there. All right, give me that. So warm. Instantly, the smell of cheese. This Ooh. is wild. There's something about griddled cheese that has a very cheese-it smell. Cheese. Cheers. 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 It is a crust. It's not overly cheesy. Here's the thing. You go into work, you don't want to be like greased up. I'm actually very happy how surprisingly light this burrito is. Yeah, it's really not greasy at all. <sighs> so, I just realized something. Uh huh. It's a breakfast burrito. Uh huh. And are what you, it is. Did you realize why they call it a breakfast burrito? It's not just eaten during breakfast, it's a breakfast packaged in a burrito. Yeah, it's breakfast foods. Annie is looking at me like I'm crazy. What else? Sometimes, okay, sometimes people see the trees before the forest. I see the forest before the trees. I don't know if you noticed, but on the menu, they actually have a wombo size. What does that mean? It's a lot bigger. Adam and Annie are gonna have a wombo size. Oh! There was a split? Low key burrito. Great start to my morning. Ready to food coma a little bit, but that's perfect because we have a three and a half hour road trip right now to the middle of California. So we're road tripping to Fresno. Road trip. What? <laughs> <laughs> it gets quite hot there. So to beat the heat, we're going to see the Forestier Underground Gardens. It's a hundred degrees right now in Fresno. So we're now a little bit further underground. It's a little bit cooler here, right? This is the underground garden of Sicilian immigrant Baldassar Foldesir. He was a citrus farmer who moved to Fresno planning to farm citrus, but he discovered all this hard rock that made it impossible to do the farming that he wanted to do. He decided to build this underground style home and turn it into a day resort to escape the heat, much like we're doing now. This is crazy. Now that you've had a Fresno fact, it's time for our burrito fact. Actually incorrect. Anaconda <laughs> fact. And why are we learning about anacondas? It's because we're about to go eat the anaconda burrito at Taqueria Urellis. That's why we're here. Taking both weight and length into account, green anacondas are considered the world's largest snakes. They grow 20 to 30 feet long, up to one foot in girth, and top out at around 550 pounds. That's minimum three Shaquille O'Neal's. Laying down. Laying down, yeah. Yeah, and a foot in girth. That's like a basketball 20 feet long too. Mm -hmm. Ready to eat this burrito? Also, Adam is up there. Hi, Adam. Let's go. We're on our way to Taqueria Urellis, that's our last stop. We're gonna be meeting Edwin there. Tell us about Taqueria Urellis. My parents decided to buy a taco stand. We were selling for about six years. It was real hard selling out on the street. At two in the morning, it was dangerous. We actually got kicked out from selling on the street. The city kicked us out, and that was the last warning. Uh, after that, we're gonna serve jail time. 
my father decided to open Taqueria Arelis. It wasn't going so good for about three years until Dan and Connor Burrito came up. Really? Everybody here in Fresno, you know, they always had the same tacos, burritos. We wanted to do it different. We wanted to have something that would call everybody's attention. It was idea after idea. We wanted to hit the jackpot, and we finally did. How many people actually order the Anaconda burrito? A lot. You'd be surprised. A day, we, we get about 50 to 70 Anaconda burritos. Really? Yep. And Whoa. we're talking about two and a half foot burritos. So this is really popular here in Fresno. It's real popular. Oh yeah, it's real popular. So how did people find out about the Anaconda Burrito? Through a video that I uploaded. At the time, I only had about a thousand followers. And that video was uploaded, and the next day, I wake up, I had 150,000 followers. Whoa! Everybody's sharing it and sharing it all around the world. Do you think the success of your restaurant is due in part to the Anaconda Burrito? Oh yeah, definitely. They bought us a house. Really? It bought us a house. It's amazing what the Anaconda Burrito has done for us. Our next step is opening a new location. Uh, now you're going to be able to dine in. New, bigger place, right? Yeah, and with uh, AC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, AC is pretty key when you're eating a two and a half foot burrito, right? Oh, yeah. I think we can do this. I have a lot of confidence in us, actually. Looking at it now, it's not as daunting as hearing somebody say two and a half feet of burrito. Is this even two and a half feet? This feels longer to me. I'm glad you asked, actually. <laughs> I brought my protractor set. Unfortunately, I only have a six inch ruler, so. Three, Three feet. Three feet. Anaconda babies are born two feet long. I think I can eat more of this than you can. Where's the halfway point? It's right here. Okay, it's right there. I'm gonna start at this end. I think you should start at that end. Okay. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> wow, it stays together. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> this is a good burrito. This is a good burrito. Uh. <laughs> Once in middle school, I got to hold a big python. The, the weight is very similar to like a large snake. Steven, you got this. Andrew, hey, take a back seat. <laughs> Go sit on the bench. I've eaten a lot more than <laughs> Doing this. I'm already almost at the last tortilla. What about you? Okay, here's the center. Yeah. Hey, you, hey, 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 I'll, I'll measure mine first. Okay, so that's. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> brought you a crazy watermelon. <laughs> Thank you. Is that what it's called on the menu? Yep, our crazy watermelon. So we get a watermelon, we cut it in half, dice it, and we put it back in. Grab a mango, strawberries, cucumbers, and then we put the special sauce, which is a chamoy. We put tahine. It's a Mexican edible arrangement. Fruit break. Ooh. Yes. Okay. I want this watermelon. Cheers. Mm. Mm. I'm ready to just have some fruit and <laughs> chill a little bit. Are you ready to call it quits? Um, Who won? This is the center point. Okay, I'm by a mile. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, that was a big burrito. Woo! Before we decide what our worth it winners are, we're going to stop into a local brewery called Tioga Sequoia and uh, wash down that anaconda. I got the Summer Vibes Hoppy Pilsner. It's Almost 100 degrees here in Fresno. Yeah, if that's true. not summer vibes, I don't know what summer vibes. We got the Half Dome California wheat. It's a very peachy drink. Cheers. Wow, that's good. Which burrito was the most worth it to you at its given price? All of the burritos I loved. They all had their place and purpose. But my worth it winner has to be Sonora Town. It's just so good. That's my worth it winner. Steven, who's your worth it winner? Thank you for asking. My worth it winner, it's gotta be the Anaconda Burrito. It's a worthy burrito. It is. It, it's also an insane value. Adam, who is your worth it winner? Annie, who is your worth it winner? Here's to a great season six. Cheers. Cheers, Adam. 